Hello, my name is Jeremy, just your average everyday guy. That is until sometime in my early 30s, I developed a spinal condition known as ankylosing spondylitis. It took me from this, six foot tall, to this, not six foot tall. But I wasn't gonna let that get me down forever. So eventually, I kicked some bad habits and started fighting back. I still get some pretty strange looks, but I'm now doing what I love, traveling and adventuring. My goal is to show other people with disabilities or anyone facing challenges that your best days don't have to be behind you and that there's always hope. So thanks for joining me, The Handicapped Hiker. On the last episode, I finished the Falls Trail at Ricketts Glen State Park, wrapping up the first of five weekend trips in my home state, Ohio, and neighboring state, Pennsylvania. After another hectic 60 plus hour work week, I was ready to escape again. Friday evening, I packed a cooler with drinks and snacks and prepared for work on Saturday morning. Once 11.30 rolled around, I shot out of the office just as fast as the factory workers left. Today's destination is only about an hour from my home, tucked between Cleveland and Akron. You guessed it, Cuyahoga Valley National Park. begin at Brandywine Falls and take the Brandywine Gorge Trail. This trail is a 1.4 mile loop with 164 feet of elevation gain. Believe it or not, I've lived in Northeast Ohio my entire life and have never been to this park. Better late than never, I guess.
parking area and boardwalk at Brandywine Falls are accessible for the most part, there are eventually stairs leading down to a lower viewpoint. All right, that was a good first hike to get things started. Now let's head over to the Boston Visitor Center and Towpath Trail. Yep. Cuyahoga Valley National Park was established in 1974 in a time when the Cuyahoga River desperately needed to be protected as it flows northward to Lake Erie through highly industrialized urban areas. The park encompasses 33,000 acres of farmland and woodlands that were otherwise being strangled by the dense surrounding population. There's a scenic drive as well as a passenger train that runs along the river. There's also a long stretch of the Ohio and Erie Canal towpath and many other trails and natural attractions throughout the park. It is a beautiful park with lots to do, but let me just warn you, if you're a national park hopper and you're coming here from another national park like Acadia or Shenandoah or Pictured Rocks, don't expect to be blown away. There's no camping within the park and practically no lodging available. You'll have to find something in the surrounding cities or further out in the rural areas. If you're here on a weekend, parking will definitely be an issue. Remember, this park is surrounded by some highly populated cities and there's no entry fee. Of course, I was only here for less than a day on an unseasonably warm weekend in October so the crowds were out in full force. Now that we've got the negatives out of the way, let me just say that it is a fantastic park and well worth a visit if you're anywhere near the area. One thing I would like to come back and do someday is take a bike ride from one end of the park to the other, then take the return trip by train. I saw a lot of people doing that, and it really looked like a lot of fun.
And here's part of the old Erie Canal. And we are on the towpath trail where they used to pull the boats up and down the canal. The towpath trail stretches the entire 20 miles within the park and beyond. It follows the historical remnants of the Ohio and Erie Canal. It also parallels the Cuyahoga River and Scenic Railway. Hello. Hello. And now the sounds of the freeway start to dissipate. The sounds of nature take over. This is where I was going to turn, but it does not appear to be available, so we'll just head back. Okay. This trail is entirely accessible, but can experience partial closures from time to time. Be sure to check the website before visiting. In fact, if I haven't mentioned it, you should always check the website before visiting any park. Now let's move along and hope we can find parking at the Ledges Trail. The Ledges Trail is about a 2.3 mile loop with 203 feet of elevation gain, according to all trails. The Park Service has slightly different numbers, but there's a lot of spur trails and it connects to a larger network of surrounding trails.
It's important to note that this is not an accessible trail at all. It has very rocky, uneven surfaces and lots of roots. But if you're able, I highly recommend it. Out of the three hikes I did today, this was my favorite. And from what I read, it's one of the best in the park.
And now, with daylight burning away quickly, it's time to head east, back home. You won't want to miss the season one finale, so be sure to tune in for the next episode, and we'll see you then. Thank you.